Welcome to Bloody Amazing's uh, fitting of a GoTech emulator into a KN5000. Uh, the slides are pretty much self-explanatory. You may need to pause the video. I've tried to get a lot of information into a small amount of area. So pause the video at any time to read what you want to do. Uh, we're talking there about the advantages and the disadvantages. Uh, to me, it has been a great project. Uh, and I, I hope it works as well for you. Once again, be careful of mains power. It can be lethal, no matter how experienced or inexperienced you are, have the power disconnected when you're working away. Uh, here is the slide showing basically what equipment you will need for the job. It generally worked out at about uh, $50 Australian. Uh, and you will see a video coming up now of actually the first part of the project. Right, the aim of our project is to make and break this connection here, which is the second pin from that direction. Okay, with those two pins there, the circuit needs to be broken uh, and joined. And also, simultaneously, the connection between this pin here called number 6 on the plug, which is 1, 2, 3 on the topmost uh, part of the plug, that and the ground plug, which you'll see marked, I've soldered that underneath, which is one, two, three, the third pin in that direction. So that's the aim of the project, is to make and break those circuits separately. And I do this by the use of a momentary switch. You'll see that when I pull it down, it wants to leap back, uh, and it's dual pole, so that we can actually make and break two circuits simultaneously. Now, I would suggest strongly that you use a momentary switch. They're available for about $5. Uh, at the electronic shop because if that switch is in the wrong position when you power up it will come up with a silly message such as how do you want me to format the hard, uh, sorry the floppy disk um, and then you have to re-power up so a momentary um, switch is the switch of choice uh, to make life very very simple trust me okay so the first part of the movie as I say is to working out basically uh, modifying the emulator as such I you will note that I have suggested you modify the emulator rather than your expensive keyboard uh, the emulators are cheap uh, to be quite honest I destroyed one actually determining how to fit this uh, but it's no major loss okay so here we are we are drilling a hole to to fit our momentary switch the switch of choices momentary switch and you may notice uh, in the slide there that actually the momentary switch is I generally have in the up position uh, and when I have it in the up position my switch means that the bottom two contacts are alive so it is contacting in the lower position so my Y's are actually on the two lower terminals the modification is quite simple. It's, it's basically an, an addition. Uh, basically, you're taking the jumper off the S1 jumper uh, and replacing it with a switch. And then three pins either side of that gap where the plugs go in, uh, you need to make a connection for the other things. Basically, what is happening uh, is the grounding the pin 6 will tell the uh, keyboard that you are inserting a disk and the uh, jumper will tell it to read that specific disk. Okay, taking your keyboard apart, I've tried to keep this brief. Uh, if you have any problems with it, look up the KN3000 thing. Basically, you need to take the peripheral screws out and the screws in the pots and it will come apart. Uh, be very, very careful of your speakers. As you can see here, I put cardboard and um, and books over the speakers please do not damage your speakers or your project will be uh, worthless uh, and then you can sort of open it up you need to remove these two floppy cables first before you try lifting the keyboard component itself otherwise you'll stress those plugs and you don't want to damage anything uh, so then once you have removed those two plugs there one is the power plug the other is the connection plug you can then just gently fold the keyboard back over onto the protection over the speakers that gives you immediate access uh, and these are the screws they're just a few screws on either end of the keyboard component there to lift it up there is your floppy 
uh, old floppy drive. You need to remove five screws to take that out. Just take note of how it is. Uh, I do have a photo if you get in trouble calling it back. Uh, then you need to remove the cradle off the floppy disk and reattach it. Now this can be quite frustrating. Use the screws that came with the emulator. Do not try and put the screws back in that came out of the old floppy drive. I'd suggest you put them into the old floppy drive so you don't lose them. Now here you'll see I've stuck some felt around the outside of that because um, it doesn't quite flit as nicely as it did in the KN3000 uh, and also it will help seal it and stop any rattles. Okay, so here you can see it's time to put the keyboard back down. Um, once again, respect the wiring. Once you've got the keyboard down, you can reattach the plugs, put the screws back into the bottom of the keyboard, uh, turn it back over. You'll see here that I've used washers that I actually put a little bit of wood glue on and, and hold them on the case to strengthen it. And okay, here we are. Here is the floppy emulator. Uh, installed in the machine. If you look carefully you can see that fault around the outside there. Um, this is because the old floppy disk was obviously designed to have some sort of suspension to stop it being jarred so much. So it's not quite a snug a fit as what it was in the 3000. Uh, but anyway, that little bit of felt does the job nicely and seals around the outside. So how do we format our memory stick to actually work? It's quite simple. We simply press the two black buttons together, push them in, power up the unit and you'll see it come up with that F01, which means it's then um, formatting. Now that memory stick has been formatted before. Normally you'll see it will count to 1000, uh, and then your memory stick is ready for use. Uh, if you do have problems getting it going after that, just simply turn the keyboard off and back on again, uh, and it should work fine. Okay, so let's remove that one and put in a memory stick that actually has some information on it. Sorry, it's a bit of a dark memory yep, yep, stick. Yep. I think that's in. Okay, now I'm going to set the level to not 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 level is a loading zone level and you'll read about that in the information supplied. I'm going to go to level two. Now what I'm going to do is you'll notice that this is a momentary switch and the idea of that is you select where you want to go, hold the momentary switch down for a second and let it go. You'll see then what has happened is the load menu has arrived. You simply tell it, yes I do want to load. <coughs> it will come up with the uh, choices there. Select the choice you want. Uh, tell it to load. And this is basically a registration memory um, disk I have in there uh, with everything as you can see. So it takes a little while to load because it's loading a lot of information. Okay, so okay, I've used that. Um, okay, so now I just want to go say to a MIDI file or a sequence file. It's probably a better thing to call them on a KN5000. So I think there's something on 40. So we need to change the numbers. Go up in the decades. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is just press the screen there again. I'm going to press the momentary button. You'll see it comes up at load. Load. There is something there to load. So we press load again. And this should be some sequenced information. You can see it's not quite as fast as a hard drive, but does the job quite adequately. Uh, you can see it also tells you what level disk you run up there. Okay, so now that should be a uh, sequence thing. Simply press play. And I'm sure those of us who were in Tech Plus will probably have a copy of that. So that's it. Quite simple. Select the number you want. Press the momentary button. Load in business. What's one fleet? Okay, so that's it. A wonderful result.